welcome back to White Lake Junction. Um, you've probably noticed I'm not in my loft. Uh, it is a bit cold, uh, so I'm in on the workbench. Um, this one's just a bit of a review on a couple of things I bought at the NEC and a couple of uh, things I've ordered and have come finally come through uh, the post. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody that come up and said hello to me, to me at the uh, Wally show. Um, it was nice to put a, a name to a face and say hello, we had a chat and that, and I appreciate everything else uh, and the feedback I got from doing these videos. It makes it worthwhile me doing them uh, and I really appreciate it and I'd like to thank you all very, very much. I must also <laughs> apologise to one chap, I think he came up on Saturday, uh, to see me and uh, I'd gone for my break at the time and I'd got my wife and we'd gone off for a break uh, and because I do a lot of shows throughout the year I do tend to know a lot of people on the exhibit exhibition circuit and you just get talking and uh, when I got back I didn't realise I'd gone for a couple of hours and, and even the lads took the mickey out of me when I got back and explained that somebody had been around to see me and asked about where I am and uh, so I apologised to the person that come round um, but ev everybody it was a welcome to see you and I really appreciate it and as I said it makes making these videos worthwhile right what I'm, I've got on there is um, on the last video I said I'll go and make the control panel but there was somebody selling them at the NEC about £16 each and um, so I bought three but I'll show you how they go now and I've ordered some electronic gadgetry to help me point recognise it you know when you throw your points you're not sure which way they're facing especially if you can't see it but this gadget will put an LED light on and show me which way the the point in but anyway we'll get on with the video and uh, as I say thank you very much for everybody that come round and I hope you enjoy this film. It's just a review uh, of some good bits. I've not been up in the loft. Um, it it is say it's a bit cold, so uh, and it's nice and warm in the spare room here. So we'll get on with the video, and I'll speak to you later. For now, then, bye. Here we are. Um, as I say, they come as a flat pack. If you can do a child, a five-year-old child's. Um, jigsaw puzzle you can put, certainly put these together um, they only take <laughs> if you dry if you pull them up dry with no glue in that take about five minutes if that a bit longer when you're gluing everything but anyway we'll go through it oh that's a spare one uh, we'll go through it and uh, they are laser cut not whether you can see sorry about the shadow but that's a little bit of an instruction pack. And say so they are laser cut, so you'll you'll find that there's, a, there's bone marks like down here and here. But it's usually another good side. That way you can see that on there. Because obviously with it being a laser, it's cut through. So you just choose the better of the sides. You see. The reason why um, I've had three is because I wanted to put a control panel just a bit bigger, probably about, oh, I don't know where you can see, about that much, that wider. And with it being up in the loft, you've got your joists, and I can't, the size I wanted, I can't get in, me, in the space for the joists. So I thought, I'll, make th I'll do three. So this will be like the centre console for the scenic bit, which is the front of the layout. And then one side will be for uh, one set of storage roads, like the up storage. And then the other side will be the down storage. That way, me and Luke can operate without being in each other's way. One of us will sit in front of this panel, and then the other one will be in front of the other panel. But we both can control this. This is a joint one, whereas the storage roads will be independent, which at a later date I'll show you what I mean when I've done them. 
But anyway, we'll get back to these. So, a five year old jigsaw puzzle. That's the the lid. It's all one piece. And these are all the, the body type of thing. This is the bottom. I don't know whether you can read that. That's their web page. I'll put it at the bottom of the screen so it'll be on there a bit longer. With this, if you can either have this put on the inside or the outside. It doesn't really matter. Whichever way you want to do. But I'll show you what I mean. A quick. This is how easy it goes together. Now I've not got no glue, so it will no doubt fall apart. Sorry about this. The only one you've got to be careful of to make sure you put it the right way is the back. Again, if this is a bad side, you go in. Obviously, you know you can't put it one wrong way round because there's no joins at the bottom like there is on the top. So that goes to the bottom and that goes in the back there. This is where it'll all fall apart. Oh, tank. Oh, that's it. It's behaved itself. That's it dry. Obviously, when you come to put them back together, because uh, you'll be gluing it and fastening it, it'll take you a bit longer. But not much longer than that. Take about another five, ten minutes maximum to put them together. I'll show you what how I've done the others. Oh. So that's how quick they can be put up. This is why I decided to buy them. This is one in their old tradition of Blue Peter I've done earlier. It's all done, all been fixed on properly. Uh, same thing, I've put the uh, web page on the inside. So if anybody asks me, all I do is lift the lid up. Oh yeah, and there it is there. Um, there's holes in the bottom and at the side. Uh, if you've got your transformers on the floor, the cables will come up. Then you connect them to wherever in inside here. These cables, uh, these holes will be for your cables to go out. You see, they're all they're all through, and uh, they'll go out to your layout, or you can put your like, cable through the big hole and then into your layout that way. Uh, but I shan't. I shall do mine in such a way that um, all the cables are coming come down come into a terminal block come into a terminal block like this and then it'll be connected on the back with one of these D-plugs the D-plugs will go in there or on the floor here, I'm not sure which way depends how much room I've got I'll go in there and then a, uh, a male plug will go in there and then off to the layout and on the layout end there'll be one of these, it'd probably be a bit better than this. This is what I've done as a makeup, and uh, uh, the plug will go into the end there, and then uh, the cable will go off to the points. But that'll come into when I start wiring all this up, I'll show you how I mean. But that's it. The only downside I've got is I wish they'd made the sides just slightly a bit thicker. Yes, it would have put a bit more money on the uh, the bill, but it'd have been stronger because maybe in exhibitions and whatnot, this is going to take a hammer in moving about. The lid, I've got no problems. Same thickness, six mil thick. Idea of putting the switches in. I did have a switch here, just a normal switch. I don't know whether that's picking that up and it just fits on nicely there's the nut at the top and that'll go in 
so that's just a nice thickness that's that done what I've done is put the glue in along there on the inside and then put a little na uh, a nail pin nail in there and it holds it together let's say 10 minutes that's all that took to build and then the third one again the blue peter style the nails I used are these they're only little pin nails you don't want no too big because you'll split the uh, plywood on this one as you can see I put hinges on uh, the trap panel go there and I put mag magnetic catches inside either side they're screwed up got a piece of ply right there same as there put it on the board so the screws from the hinges all screw into it they're the same bit of ply so the screws from the magnetic catches are good but the top I had to glue it they're glued in with what they call a hot glue gun oh excuse me a hot glue gun is one of these as it suggests it melts melts this rod and it comes out liquefied glue just be careful because it is hot and that's all I've done with that just glued that on there same principle and it locks um, they're not a bad box nice and light ever so light uh, but as I said, I'd like the sides and the bottom and the back. It's been a bit thicker. Um, and I think the other thing I'd have liked them to have done is I'll show you what I mean, which could have been a bit better. At the minute, if you look at the edge of those boxes, it looks like that. Comes up to a point and then down. What I would have liked is something like that. Where you come across, then you could have put your hinges on here. But um, this is all right. Is what I've done is that I cut into the top. That's all right, boy. To be. Is what I've done is I cut the board. Not the straightest cut because I've done it in a bit of a rush. Um, but the others will be a lot better. But that's that anyway. And what I'm going to show you now is what I ordered electronically wise. One of the gadgets I've been looking forward to is one of these. I know it doesn't look a lot, but what this gadget does, it... Um, on your control box you'll draw a mimic plan of your layout whatever it is and what this does is when you flick your point motor switch an LED will light up I've got one set up and I'll show you what I mean and, and it shows you which way your point motors are facing whether they're straight on or turning left or turning right and basically what it is you come from your switch you got your switch this side and it goes into this end and then on this row here are connected to your LEDs which are placed on your control panel the way point motors are. Um, 
I've ordered four. Um, when you get them, you'll get your panel, whichever amount you've ordered. Uh, you'll get one panel, enough LEDs to do there, so there'll be about 16. 16 resistors, but you must put these between the board and your LED and clips to hold the LEDs in position on your board uh, sorry on your panel and you also get a wiring diagram basic form oh I don't know whether let me withdraw there we are so you can see it basic draw uh, basic plan the box is this area the LEDs and then that's your switch side it tells you when I phoned Marco Miniatures up and I was talking to the chap and he's ever so friendly and he'll help you out as best as you can if you don't know someone just ask him the question and uh, oh sorry I'm zooming back in and um, it did say the control uh, the power source for this for the LED side must be DC it actually says on a DC he says if you put an AC voltage on you could cause damage and it says 12 volts DC yeah I'm sure it's just having a quick yeah it's 12 it works off 12 volt system um, I should imagine if you well I've got it wired up to a 9 volt battery so it will work on a 9 volt battery I wouldn't go any higher than 12 volts for the this side to work the LEDs because all this side's doing all you're doing on there is working the LEDs basically and you don't want to blow them because they'll pop and you've got to replace them obviously what I like and all when you get the set sorry for this I should have read done this earlier you get your LEDs as I say Ooh. and the cap and all these caps do are just clip on you've drilled your hole in your control panel popped your LED through the hole and then oh, sorry but these are and then you put a cap on it and it just makes it a little bit more neater I don't know whether it's coming through you can just about see the bulb on the top there they just push on push up pull off uh, so they're a cap that goes over the LED and that's all they do and it just makes it a lot, lot neater and it holds the LED on your control panel. So you get enough, you'll get, as I say, you get 16 LEDs, 16 caps, 16 resistors, because this will work uh, up to eight points. Um, if you look on the web page, you'll see they've got on the web page red and green LEDs. And I was speaking to him because I wanted just green, one colour. And it did say that if anybody asks about having single colours, you can sort that out, whether it's red or green. And it did, ma did mention other colours, and I can't remember them. Um, but if you have talked to him, he's ever friendly, helpful. And he'll sort it out. Um, so I've ordered four, as I said. I've got one temporary wired up, which I'll show you how it works at the minute. But the good bit of care, I say they're around. I think they're around about twenty-six, twenty-seven pound plus postage. Uh, it just took a day. I phoned them up in the afternoon, unfortunately, so I missed the early post. So I've gone two days later. The only thing that was confusing is um, when Roy Mail notified that it's on the way. I think it comes up Devonshire Models or something like that and it got me a bit confused and then these turned up so I texted it was his old trade name 
but uh, look, if you have a look on his website micro miniatures um, dot co dot uk you'll see a range he does these um, a welding light which I shall show you how this one works this again is just two bulbs got through the control through panel I'll show you how that works in a bit um, so for now I've rigged one up to work off a battery and we'll show you how they work here we are I've got one temporary wired up um, as I say just normal rocker switch center off it's sprung loaded so it keeps going back to the center which is ideal for your points switch into the wide up and then the other side got the two LEDs and the battery it's just off off uh, screen at the minute let me see if I can so you know I'm being truthful there we are just a normal battery 9 volt battery and it does the job just fine is what I'll do I'll leave the lights on and hopefully you'll be able to see the LEDs put the pen there so you can see same again you must make sure positive and negative wide all I'm doing is just putting my fingers on the battery so I apologise for things in a bit. As you see, automatic lights up. We switch. Try and hold it with one hand. Oh, there we are. And that's what you do. And as I say, that'll work all day long, hopefully. Um, what I do like about it and all, if I took my finger off the wire so there's no power going through, when you reconnect up, the same bulb will light up. Let me just put that there. I'll leave that one lit and you'll see. That one's the one that's lit. Take the um, power off. So whether you a couple of days or whatnot, you come back switch all the power back on the same light will switch up so you know instantly how your point motors have been set let me just switch the lights off and then you'll see it probably better in the dark so right, the light switch is behind the camera there we are you can see the green light come on telling you I know it's a bit black there we are that's me switching the battery uh, the switch on and off get a bit of light back on and that's it and that's just working off a 9 volt battery so that's what I mean, you don't need to go any more than 12 volt. So I just say the 12 volt because the amount of LEDs that's got on. But you can always try it on a 6 volt or 12 volt if you've got a, one of them uh, transformers. But it does say 12 volts, but it must be DC. Uh, otherwise you could cause damage. I'm not, um, cause damage to the circuitry around here. It has got a built-in fuse, which is here. So hopefully that will blow before any damage is caused around here. Um, it's a good bit of kit. I shall put two of these in the console, in the middle console that will do for the um, scenery side. So I think then that gives me 16 points. I think there's 16, 15 points on the scenic side. And, uh, and then I'll put one each in the storage roads so that I can see what uh, points are set at the far end I don't need to do it for the ones that, at the end I'm sat at but at the other end of the board I ain't going to be able to see where they are so I'll put one in each for them 
Um, I've just done a quick di line diagram. It's nothing, it, it, all it is, oh there we are, is your trap plan on your baseboard. These are your switches, these would be your lights and pointed. These will be your LEDs. Uh, normal point and that'll be your um, slip, double slip. These here is your uh, switch, so you switch it from one to the other, same as that. Um, when you switch your point motor over so the train comes straight across, that LED will light up and that will and, and that's that's just a basic trap plan you would see on your mimic board um i don't know how one wired my slips i've got a couple of double slips so i'm not sure but I'll, I'll come to that on another on another video um but that's it basically as you've just seen normal nine volt battery in fact it's just a wilco's battery and uh, and it works off nine volt Obviously, is what I should do when I um, put these on the board on my control panel. Oops, sorry, I've gone the wrong way. Is what I'll do is connect the wires as normal on the switch, and they'll be soldered on. These are just wrapped round, just to temper. And is what I'll do. I'll bring two wires down that are going to the point motor put a terminal block in and then take two sets of two wires out one set will go to um, these little gadgets oh we dropped one on the floor one set will go to these and then to the plug out the other end and the other set will come in here to feed the LEDs and then the LEDs will be upon my panel board and that's the um, point, point position indicator. That's what they call them. Um, so I'm looking forward to putting this in. When I put these in properly, I'll spend more time explaining how I've done and whatnot. But this is just a quick setup to show you how it's done. As you throw the switch, the lights work. This will this system will also work on the push button. You've seen the push buttons, I haven't got any here at the minute. Or if you've got a stud and probe system, it'll work on either of them systems plus this switch. Well, I hope that's been helpful. I've got just another gadget to get and then uh, I'll set that one up. Same thing. And then uh, hopefully you've picked some good things up. Now the last bit of kit that I ordered and sent off for is this bit is there and basically what it is it if you have it in a um, warehouse it's to simulate somebody's doing some welding it's um, these lights will flash on and off at a time and it's what you do you put your electrical source in via a switch on your control panel and then you can switch it on and off as and when you like. Um, or you can leave it on permanent. Uh, but I, I don't know whether I would or not, to be honest. But I think I'd wire it through a switch so I can switch it on and off as and when. You put these, put these bulbs, these bulbs in a building, to whether it's a wire, uh, warehouse or a garage or something like that, and it shows off and sparking and that. I'll show you with the lights on. Again, it's working off a 9 volt battery. I think this says on 12 volts. Yeah, 12 volts DC. This is your wiring diagram. And it says it says in big letters there works with 12 volts DC regulated power. Not to use AC. You could cause damage. It must be DC. But I'm using a 9 volt battery, make sure I've got positive and negative the right way around. 
Oh, and these all switch. If anybody's epileptic, I apologise because um, they do flash on and off fairly quick. Just be warned that it doesn't affect you. There we are. And that represents the arcing of uh, welding and whatnot. Let me switch the lights off. I'll switch the light off. Just be warned, say, if you're epileptic or it like that, that you're not looking at them too long. And you just imagine that in a building. I can't think of anything building wise that have got up here. And, but I, as, I shall wear out wire this through a switch. Nice gadget. Um, you can turn. There's a res resistor that will fit on the blue light side. I won't pour any more on case there is anybody that's got epileptics. But don't forget when you're playing with your railways, you, you, you'll add this in a building so it won't be as bright. Uh, not only that, so I'm just looking to see what I can use to cover to represent the building. Right, I'll switch this light off. All this is is a roll of tape, and I'll just put it over. Let's have a look, Let's show you what it might look like inside a building. That's in, that'll be inside a building type of thing. To give you an idea, it looks quite effective actually. I'll do it again with the lights on. You get that flashing going through. It's not as bright, but then again, it'll be inside a building and get a bit of a flashing. It represents somebody welding, uh, which would be ideal if you go out in a garage, a mechanic welding on a car or something like that. Um, or in a warehouse where they're doing some electrical or some sort of welding that's going on, building site and that. But these are the two gadgets and I'm looking forward to fitting these on. Now this is called, <laughs> and he's lost the paperwork. Oh, it's called a simulated arc welder, uh, 12 volt, two channel. So that's the resistor and that'll go on the blue light on the red wire. But it does tell you in the in the wind diagram. In, oh, sorry, in the disc, in the wind diagram, uh, the fit on. But so by all means, give them a ring. Um, I shall leave the web page on the bottom. When I fit these in, this one might be a little while yet before I fit this one in, because obviously I'm still building the layout. But this one. I'll be fitting when I put the control panels in and I shall show you how I fit them in and I'm looking forward to putting these in. Um, the times I've done on uh, Derby Road and I forgot which way the points are switched so hopefully that will cure that. And not only that, with the new layout I can't really see some of the points and that's the idea of had these. Well I hope that's been helpful. I say normally I won't do a review because there's a few people that do reviews and that so but uh, this was different well I've got my battery out I'll show you a little trick some of you probably know about it um, especially when we're coming up Christmas time uh, there'll be some swap meets afterwards and uh, you'll probably go around there see a nice loco you want but because it's a swap meet, they won't have any way of testing your loco, seeing if it's running. And that is where the battery comes in under. Trusted 9 volt, you know the top. It's one I've just been using for them electrical bits. And what you do is, you take one of these with you to a show. 
you pick your loco, you ask if you can see it running, and a lot of them will say, oh, no, no, no. But you're still a bit wary whether you, it works or not. And when you're paying 60, 70 quid, you take it home and it don't work, you're going to be really annoyed. A good little trick is get your battery. Unfortunately, I don't think you're going to see. And put them, put it on the wheels. You might hear, I'll, I won't say a lot, but you might hear it work in the motor. Don't know whether you can hear that, the motor's running. There we are. That buzzing's the motor. Let me see if we can get through the light. Oh, you might be able to see the lights working. Let me just switch one of the lights off. Make it a bit darker, you might see the light. Because it's 12, uh, 9 volt and they're a 12 volt loco. Not the brought. There we are. Turn it round, the red light should come on now. There we are, and that's just using a 9 volt battery. They say, if, even if you get to shows, take a little 9 volt battery, ask them if you can test it. Uh, some can, some can't, uh, or if you're to show. You might be able to get somebody to run it on their layout for it and to test see if it works. Oh, to test see if it works. 9 volt battery comes in handy. Um, be warned, it'll only work on an analog train, the one that's not been converted to DCC. So it's, oh, excuse me, only analog, non converted. And all you're doing is you're putting your, uh, the two pins on the wheels. Just to check, you'll see it. Um, if you've got a loco that all six, all six wheels pick up, you're all right. But I don't think the middle ones on this work. No, they don't. So just go to the ends and you'll see them working. And uh, it's just an handy little gadget. But, uh, but that's just some handy for you to know. Well, I hope that's been helpful for you. Uh, as I say, the electronic pieces are from Micro Miniatures. Uh, my um, control panel is from... I've forgotten who they are from now. Uh, com. I'll put some... Uh, um, information underneath the filming so you can get in touch with them. The um, Grange and Hodder, the control panel, they do a range of baseboards as I said um, and one or two other control panel boxes that you might might find beneficial to you. Um, micro Miniatures, the electronic people, they do a range of other electronics and whatnot for you. They do CD, uh, capacity discharge units. Um, so these point indicators and they do they sell electrical bits as well so if you want to get in touch with them but that's that for now for now as so I don't normally do um, reviews because 
uh, you've got people like Simon Shedd. He does them, but I've noticed he does them on rolling stock. Um, new, new locos come out any rolling stock. He tends to do them all engage. Uh, so I thought I'll do this one because not many people do one on electronics or things you can put on your board like and control panels. So that's why I've done this one. I hope that's been helpful to you. Um, I'd like to wish everybody and all of you a very happy Christmas and a Merry New Year. Or even the other way around, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Um, hopefully I shall get this control panel sorted out in the January. I've got some time off over Christmas so all being well, her ladyship might let me have time off upstairs to do these. I've got to paint them and varnish them and seal them, so that's going to take some time. And obviously when I start working on them, I'll show you what I'm doing. Uh, so as I say, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And don't forget, enjoy your modelling. All the best then. Bye.